What's up guys, welcome back to DCS World and welcome back to my tutorial series for the A10C Warthog. We're chugging along here and we've got one more major video to cover. And for this one, I've brought a friend along. I've got Travis here flying another A10 in the area. He's actually orbiting just off to my nine o'clock there. Actually more like my three o'clock because I know my left from right. But uh, say hi, Travis. Hey everyone. So what we're going to be doing uh, is we're going to be looking at the situational awareness data link of the A10C, also known as the saddle. So we need to do a little bit of setup here. So I'm just going to zoom in and pause my camera on our left side MFD. We want to be looking at our TAD page and we want to first click on the push button next to net. So if we look at the net page, we see a couple of things here. We first see our own ID, and then we see our group ID. What these numbers mean is the group is essentially what you know network you're a part of. So in this case, we are a part of group number one. And if Travis has his stuff set up correctly, he should also be a part of group one. Are you? Yep. All right, good. And our own IDs will be different. We'll be part of the same group, but we'll have different own IDs, so that way we can identify ourselves on the network. So my group ID, or correction, my own ID is 15, or the number 15. And Trav, what did you say yours was? 25 or 25. All right, so he is 25, I am 15, and <clears throat> the way we're going to identify each other is it's going to be own ID and group ID together. So the full identification for each of our aircrafts for mine would be 1501, and for his would be 2501. Now that we've got that set up, Let's back out of this page by clicking the button return to TAD page. And I'm actually going to make my TAD soy with coolie left long. Zoom out a little bit because Trav is a little far away from me so I can see him. And now let me zoom in just a little bit further. You can now see a blue circle with the number 25 on the TAD. I'm right under my mouse cursor there. That's Travis's aircraft. So now that we're on the same network, but we have our own own IDs, we can now identify each other on the TAD page. So if he's looking at his TAD page, he should also see me off in the distance there as well with the number 15 in my blue circle. Do you see that? Got you up my 130. All right, so he sees that. Now, what we can do is we can use our TAD we can use our slew control on the TAD to move our TAD cursor around, and I can hover over him. And if I do TMS up short, I can hook him. So as I covered in the TAD video, we can hook things with our TAD. And now I basically have permanent info about him. So. Uh, I see that his range to me is about four miles, and I'm at his 2-1, you know, the direction's changing because we're orbiting each other, but um, you can see his bearing, or my bearing to him right now. Uh, if we click on this button here, own hook, we can switch it to hook own, and vice versa. This is basically just changing the data that we see uh, from its frame of reference, so now I see my bearing to him, currently 068, 070, it's increasing again, but also still about four miles. And we can switch it to give us uh, perspectives from bullseye or to the cursor. And back to, I like to leave it at own hook because that uh, gives a reference from myself, the own ship, to whatever I'm hooking. Uh, it's a little bit more on the TAD page specifically, not so much for the data link, but it is it is useful in conjunction. Uh, what the data link now allows us to do, let me unpause my camera here, go over to my other MFD, and bring up our messages page. 
I'm just going to pause my camera there. The situational awareness data link allows A10Cs that are part of the same group to send messages to each other, which is actually pretty neat. So the way we do that is we first have to identify the airplane that we want to send the message to. So in this case, I want to send a message to Travis. I need to use his full identifier from the network. So in his case, it would be 2501. And if I zoom out, that's in my scratch pad there. You can enter that number via your UFC or the CDU keypad. And I'm going to drop that into the 2 field. So now we have 25-01. I'm going to click on mod text. So now I can change between these text lines here with the line up and down arrow. And using my CDU keypad, which I actually have bound to my physical keyboard to make it easier, I'm going to type a message to him. So let's say, hi, Trav. And if I zoom out, you can actually see that in my scratch pad. And if I click mod text, hi, Trav now appears on the screen. And all I need to do is click send. And he should get a notification that he's gotten a new message. I see it. Okay, so what he'll do is he'll look at his received messages and he'll see it there. He can then delete it if he wants to. And then uh, why don't you try sending me a message? All right. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to two. I'm entering in one five zero one in my UFC. And hit two, and I've got one five zero one entered as my subject or as my destination, I suppose. Mod text, and then drop down. Now I do not have mine mapped to my keyboard, so I'm gonna click mine one at a time. <laughs> Pretty useful. And then click on mod text again. I've got that up here on my MFD, and then send message. All right. Now I have down here, a little hard to see, but I have a new message indicator here. I can click the acknowledge button to make that go away so I can act it. And now on the messages screen, I can go to the received button, RCVD. And I see his message now. It's all the way over on the side, but hey. And it came from 25-01. And if you were to send me multiple messages, there would be a list of them here. But right now it's just message one of one since he only sent one. But that's fairly self-explanatory. So now I'm going to delete this message. And now we're back to no message. Unpause my camera. We're looking straight ahead again. That is one function of the saddle. Sending messages between aircraft, which is pretty useful, especially if you're in an airspace where... Uh, radio communications might be compromised, and that does happen. So if you need to send messages to another airplane securely, you can do so over the situational awareness data link. Very, very useful. The most useful function of the situational awareness data link allows A10Cs to send SPEES to each other, so they can send targeting data. So the way we're going to do that is we first need to create a SPE of our own and just for simplicity's sake and probably one of the best ways you're ever going to create a SPI, as always, is using the lightning targeting pod. So we've got a targeting pod up on my right hand screen here. I'm just going to slew it over to these targets. Let's zoom in on them here. Get it nice lined up on that tank right there. And we'll go TMS up long to create a SPI. So I now have a SPI. If I look on my TAD, I've got my three-tiered wedding cake designating a SPI. And if I look on the HUD, I see that the SPI is given by the TGP. Now, how do I send that data to my buddy here? Well, if we look at the TAD, I'm just going to zoom in on the TAD again and pause my camera there. Notice how it says SPI off 
here. Now this isn't a button on the MFD that we can press, however, to actually broadcast the SPI, we're going to go DMS, that's data management switch, left, long, and now I see here we have SPI on, and if Trav looks at his TAD, he should see somewhere on the map a two-tiered wedding cake. I do. It also, appeared as a diamond first, and now it is a two-tiered wedding cake. All right. So what then he is going to do is he is going to use his TAD cursor to then hook that speed, just like I hooked his aircraft, same way. Done. And then once you hook it, you're going to go TMS up long. And it's now a three-tiered cake. So what he has done is he has now turned my speed into his speed. He might not know exactly where that speed is right away, but if he were to, say, go over to his targeting pod... Let me just unpause my camera here. If he were to go over to his targeting pod, make his targeting pod the sensor of interest, and then do the slave all sensors to speed function... So let me just wait for him to do that. It's done. He should now be looking at a group of four tanks. Can you confirm a uh, group of four tanks? Four tanks. All right. So he's looking at uh, more or less what I'm looking at here. Uh, I could have him read off the coordinates that he's seeing, but just out of interest, I know for a fact he's looking at that. Because <laughs> it does work. We've tested it. Now, uh, at his leisure, he could go drop bombs on that if he wants to or go blow it up all right so it's currently at my almost at my three o'clock so we're gonna get a little bit of distance well he's getting his weapons on target there just a good point to note for an aircraft that is acting as a forward air control airborne or a fac a uh, which is something the a-10 does pretty commonly uh, you could transmit this speed to an airplane that is carrying weapons. So in this case, Trav is carrying JDAMs. And let's say, for instance, he didn't have a targeting pod and couldn't find the targets himself. He could use my targeting data to get the weapons on target because he might not see the targets, but I do. So I can show him where they are and he can just drop his bombs and the bombs will do what they need to do. So. That's kind of the idea behind why you would share a speed with another airplane. We are lined up and running in. And in true FAC A fashion, I will say you're cleared hot. We're within maximum range. And pickle. We'll go F6 cam real quick just to watch his bomb fall. And it looks to be tracking where I was looking. There it goes. Let's go watch it from my TGP screen. Boom. So that's pretty cool, right? You can share targets between airplanes and coordinate attacks in really nifty ways like that. So now if Trav wants to, he can designate a SPI for me and we can try this again. And uh, I can drop the bomb. What I need to do first is I need to first turn off my broadcasting and unhook. So I'll wait for him to designate a speed for me. Point track. D designated. All right, and then the broadcast is DMS left long? Yep. Do you want me to do that now or wait? Uh, you can do it uh, now. DMS left long, speed on. All right, and if I look at my TAD, I see a two-tiered wedding cake. Make sure my TAD is soy. 
and I'm going to slew my cursor over to it. I'm going to hook it. And then I'm going to go TMS up long, and it is now a three-tiered wedding cake. And I now see that my spee is given by the tad, as noted in the HUD. And just out of, um, just to make it a little more fun, let's pretend for a moment that I don't have a targeting pod. Let's bring up my DSMS, and I'm going to select, we'll select my GBU-38s. And let's get lined up and run in on the target. So I'm running in. In range and one away. That was actually in a perfect spot to just kind of turn in and drop there. And now, like I said, we'll pretend for a moment I don't have the targeting pod, so Trav will have to tell me if that bomb impacts. Good hit. All right, that's hits on target. So that's what that looks like from the receiving end when you receive a speed from someone. Now the last thing, which is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit trickier to use because the symbology is a little, a uh, little different we can actually send tasking to each other. Now, the way that works is, let me grab my TGP. I'm going to just find another target here. Another group of tanks right there. We'll designate that as my SPI. Okay, so we know it's a SPI with our three-tiered wedding cake. My SPI is given by the TGP again. Now, what I want to do is I want to go over to my TAD once again. Let me just pause the camera so we can clearly watch it. With the TAD soy, I'm going to hook Travis. And then notice I have this button here, send. 2501. If I click that. I see new tasking on yep. both MFDs. All right. And with that, he should also get some symbology on his TAD for where he should point his targeting pods target diamond. So if you remember from the targeting pod video, on the tad we get a little diamond that denotes where our targeting pod is looking so he could then use that symbology that he has to move his diamond over that spot and then find roughly where I'm looking now the sending of tasking is a little bit less precise than just broadcasting of a spee but it is useful in certain scenarios so it might take him a minute to actually find the targets that I was looking at. All right. So what I did was um, on my TAD, I cursored over the red triangle I get from your tasking, marked that as my SPI, and then slaved my TGP to that SPI. Okay. That works. And if uh, so now, all, all said and done, you should be looking at a group of four tanks. I can confirm. All right. Four tanks. A little bit more legwork needed to be done to actually get his sensors on target with this method, but it also does work. Um, you'll also notice you'll get new tasking sometimes from AI JTAX that can connect to your data link as well, and we'll be able to send you tasking as well. Um, that little function uh, requires a bit of scripting in the mission editor bit beyond the scope of this video, but uh, it does exist. Now, uh, let's say Trav wanted to do that for me so that uh, I can see what that looks like. So Trav, what you'll do is you'll designate something as a SPI. All right, we'll pick one of those tanks. <clears throat> I'm just going to move my targeting pod off target just so looking at it. 
Right, I have a target designated as Spee, and okay. I am broadcasting. Okay, you're broadcasting a Spee? Yeah, I should turn that off. Turn that off. Okay. All right, off. So what you're then going to do is you're going to hook my aircraft with the TAD. Gotcha. And then you should see send 1501. I see it. So click on that. Now I see uh, new tasking. Just as you saw as well. And it's actually covered by my existing SPI symbology, but I do see your target diamond. Would you like a better one? Yeah, pick another one that's a little bit further from where we were looking. I uh, can do. In fact, I can actually... I should have done that first. But it's okay. I've got another one. All right, go for it. All right, designated. Got you hook. Send one five zero one. There we go. I see new tasking, and now you can. Let me zoom in just a little bit further because it's still a little tricky to see, but it's a little easier now. You can see the flashing red triangle. And also, you notice the flashing attack at the top there. So let's act that one more time. What this basically is doing is saying, here's a tasking, go blow this spot up right now. More or less. And let's see if I can do this. Uh, let's see if I can do this with the targeting diamond. My TGP. Let me move that out of there. TGP soy. I'm slewing my targeting diamond around, get it roughly lined up, and if I look over at the TGP, ah, he was looking at a slightly different group of four tanks. So I have found them, and I can make them my spee, and I can go drop a weapon on them if I want to. But that's the gist of it, folks. That is the situational awareness data link. In a, in a nutshell, it involves sh uh, sharing messages and sharing target information between aircraft on the same network. Extremely useful for coordinated missions. You can build missions around this, uh, around this function. And it's uh, really cool in that you can do this. So, um, yeah, that's really all I have on the saddle. Um, Get out there and practice with it. Find a buddy to uh, pick some targets and blow stuff up. Have some fun with it. And I will see you next time. Take care. Say bye, Trav. Thanks for having me on the channel. Bye, guys.